So now they're saying Russia's about to do what? Check this out. Let's check this out. Tonight, the White House is confirming a new national security threat. The Vladimir Putin's Russia is hell-bent on putting an anti-satellite system into space. The Republican chair of the House Intelligence Committee first set off alarms, and now a U.S. official tells CNN that the threat may not be a weapon designed to attack humans, but it is still cause for concern inside of the Pentagon. For more on this, I want to bring in astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's the author of Accessory to War, the Unspoken Alliance Between Astrophysics and the Military. Yeah, hey, scary, thanks for having me. Scary stuff. It's all scary. Um, you have been raising concerns about this for years. So these new revelations, what do you make of where this fits in? Well, so people have been concerned forever about the militarization of space. But in fact, ever since we've had access to space, in a way, it's been militarized because mm -hmm. it's been used as a high ground for spying. Right. And it turns out... And no one's paid attention to that. Don't y'all find that interesting? Everybody else is off doing their own thing, worried about, of course... We need to be worried about what's going on here. But it's always been talks about people weaponizing space, weaponizing space and using that to their advantage. Like, and people have not paid attention to this. This is what I've been screaming and everyone else has been screaming about. Not to be not especially useful for parking weapons that you would then deploy later. Because space, you can't just stay there, you're in orbit. And if you want to deploy a weapon, you kind of have to be near where your target is supposed to be for you to hit it. Meanwhile, we already have intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right. You can launch a missile from any place on Earth and hit any other place within 45 minutes. So space-based weaponry is has been overplayed in the in the in movies and in yeah. our fears. But really, another factor is if you're going to go up and start smashing satellites. That's, uh, forgive the expression, but it's like peeing in your own bathtub because you make a mess yeah. of all of space. Well, I mean, explain, just to take a step back here, sure. I mean, this, we're talking about what is being described as a nuclear powered device that could jam satellites. What does that mean for just a, a regular layman? Well, I haven't seen the reports, yeah. so, and there's a lot still to be disclosed, but. There are ways, there are multiple ways of disabling other satellites. One of them is to smash it, but that's bad because then you create particles that could hurt your own satellites that might be passing through that zone. Another way is to just disable them electronically. They all use electronics. And the worry that it's nuclear powered to enable, you don't, you don't need nuclear, there's plenty of sunlight there. You use solar pa panels to give your energy. So the idea. So this makes me think what else? is he trying to do? What are they trying to do here? Because based on what Neil is saying here, it doesn't take, it doesn't require all of that. So to me, that tells me, oh, they trying to do more and they're trying to do something else. And we need to figure that part out. That's the most important part. We got to figure out what's going on. That it's nuclear powered. I find I, I, I'm not entirely mm. convinced that that's a, like a strategic move. Maybe there's something that we don't know. Well, about plus, if you detonate a nuclear device in a vacuum, most of the damage that you would ever have on Earth comes from a blast wave moving through the air. And if there's no air, the only damage the explosion would give you is you can get an electromagnetic pulse out of it, but or there would be sort of radiative damage. But you can, but then that's so messy. And so I'm just thinking militaristically. Yeah, I mean, I, you could target, you could target a laser at a at a sensitive part of a satellite and dis disable it. You don't have to like blow stuff up. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is part of the the story that I think. All right, Neil, you, you kind of like divulging too much. Is anybody else here wanting him to be like, yo, shh, shh, don't give him any ideas. How, how about that? You know what I mean? Maybe they do know this stuff, but what if they don't? That's 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 how I'm brain. Thanks, Neil. I don't give them no more ammunition than they already got. It might be confusing to people, yes. which is, what's the point? What could Russia be trying to accomplish? And I mean, with all things, we were talking about the space race earlier, there's going to be a competitive nature of this. If you start to see Russia doing it, you're going to start to see China and the United States. What are the implications hence, of that? Hence the birth of our Space Force. Yeah. All right? They're tasked with protecting our assets in space 
and making sure that our, not only protecting the pre-existing assets, but making sure that our future access to space is not denied mm -hmm. by an adversary. So this is like part of the prime directive in the service of American security. Uh, I, I can tell you that the, uh, in terms of destroying another satellite, like I said, there are already ways to do that. There are these sort of what they call kinetic kills, where you can take a missile, no explosives necessary at all, because the satellite is already moving 18,000 miles an hour. All you have to do is get in its way, and the thing explodes. What is he Russia's doing? Russia's done it, China's done it, we've done it, India has done it. So, to, and then you can target the satellite at will. If you're stuck in orbit, you might not be near a satellite that you want to take out. You have to wait until the orbits line up. This is, just seems so inefficient. Yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm just skeptical of how dangerous this thing can be relative to everyone's emotions attached to it. It seems to suggest that there's there's probably some more to the story here about what's really going on. It seems like also the United States is not super concerned about this in this moment. They say this could be some years away for whatever this is to actually to be materialize deployed. Right. and be deployed right. out into space, right. so, into the universe. Uh, I like, say. like I said, anything that people fear of it, we already have the capability of accomplishing. Right. It's just maybe a different version of possibly a different version. Yeah. An electromagnetic pulse is interesting. You can send a, a pulse of electromagnetic energy that basically fries all electric circuits in in a in, in a region. There's some movies that have portrayed this, yeah. by the way. Uh, one of them was uh, Ocean's Eleven. By the oh, way, okay, okay. <laughs> they created an EMP. That's that, not the movie I thought you were going to oh, say. No, it knocked out the power <laughs> grid to to Las Vegas, right. so they can complete their heist. But all if you right. do that, then you're taking out. You know how many satellites? There are thousands of yeah, satellites. It's a little and not all of them are just your enemy satellite in one zone. Everybody's got satellites crossing. It's it's it should be viewed as sort of sacred international space. Yeah. And it's not. Like yeah. inter So that makes me think again that it's something more to it. Like we're just looking surface. We're 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 surface on this thing. You know what I mean? And then how did this information leak out so fast? Like like it wasn't like Maybe they did that purposely so it can get back to them, let them know we on it. I think it's also interesting to know that we have a space front line, a, a front line defense system for space. Anything that happens or takes place, transpires up there, we're ready and on a, on on go to defend. So I think that's pretty interesting too. International waters. Hence the reason why we have Space Force, as you pointed out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, DeGrasse Tyson, always a treat to have you here. Thank you. I'm finally here in person. I thank you. Thank you for thank you for explaining past. explaining astrophysics to okay. us. We needed that tonight. <laughs> All right. NASA is back at it again with their secrets and mysteries. If you got to take a leak, I suggest you do it now before we get into NASA's leaks that they definitely didn't want the public to see because trust me, you're not going to want to miss these. Up first on our list, we have the recent discovery of something incredible incredibly strange found on the side of the International Space Station. Buckle up. In October of 2023, a leak was, was detected in the station's backup radiator, which forced Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko to strap on a spacesuit and take a zero-gravity walk outside to try and figure out what was causing the issue. When the 59-year-old space enthusiast arrived at the radiator panel, he made a shocking discovery. It appeared as though a series of sporadic holes had been drilled onto the panel. Oleg reported his findings and then began tending to the leak, collecting those loose liquids through a suction tool, until all of a sudden he noticed a strange globule of what appeared to be coolant make its way onto his safety tether. He relayed the event to Moscow Mission Control, who responded demanding that he return to the interior of the ISS immediately. While it was most likely just an- Whoa. I think he needs to be- If we watch movies, we've seen a thousand movies, and we've seen normally when somebody come in contact with that, something happens, it gets on them, goes in their body or, or some kind of way, like it looks like a fungus or something like that too, bacteria or something, the way it's spreading and, and, and sprawling out everywhere. Nah, he, they need to quarantine him, man, and check on him up there and before we let him back on the planet, bro. Nothing against him, but that could be bad. 
an anti-gravity ball of coolant, we really had no idea what the mysterious glob was. Furthermore, and perhaps even more concerning, scientists, astronomers, astronauts, and cosmonauts alike are completely baffled as to what caused the leak in the first place and left behind a collection of deep holes in the panel's surface. Next on our list, we have a radio trans- oh, That sounds like somebody sabotaged the ship and put that in there to do something. That looks like something that can shut our our planet down like 2020 all over again. That looks like what that has the potential to be. Transmitted and laser messages received by NASA coming from deep space. The communications took place for the first time in November of 2023 and have continued into this year after NASA launched the Psyche spacecraft out in the hopes of locating a comet by the same name. As the spacecraft moves along its journey, it has been in frequent communication with NASA officials on the ground. The first communication came in the form of a deep space optical communication, a laser signal, and was detected from 10 million miles away from Earth. On January 1st of this year, NASA researchers were able to use radio frequencies on the spacecraft at 20 million miles away to download a photograph of the Psych team at a rate of 15.36 megabytes per second, which is 40 times faster than the standard radio frequency. The hope for Psych is that it will be able to remain in communication with the Earth even at a distance of 2.5 times that of our Sun, which would be about 186 miles as it continues its search for its namesake comet. Next up, we have the long-awaited release of legitimate UFO findings taken by U.S. Navy pilots, and they were declassified by the Pentagon in early 2023. Among the releases were two videos depicting multiple UFOs or UAPs, unidentified Another aerial one. phenomenon. The first of which was taken in South Asia on the 15th of January and depicts an unidentified aerial presence moving at speeds unreachable by any known aircraft in commission to date. Not only that, but as the object through the field of view of the camera lens, it appeared to have left behind some kind of atmospheric wake before it disappeared completely into the sky. The next video showcased a suspicious object after it had been seen dropping 80 feet from the sky right down to the surface of the ocean in record-breaking time. The pilot who filmed the UAP reported that the waters which the object had come close to appeared to have been boiling. When the possible extraterrestrial Whoa. spacecraft finally came back into view, it was captured hovering above the water and then disappearing swiftly into the atmosphere, leaving behind no wake in the oceans below, despite its close proximity to the water during its acceleration. As the Does anybody else feel like every time we hear something else about these videos we've previously heard about, we get a little bit more information? Like who, who keeps leaving out parts or adding in parts, whatever it is, I'm, to the point where I'm getting frustrated. I never heard anything about boiling water as it was shooting past the water or whatever, coming close to it, going so fast. I never heard it made the water boil. Now, that in itself is a cause for concern, bro. Like, and if you're not noticing, even with the new one that they just put out, the, the UAP jellyfish or whatever they want to call it, like, it constantly is going towards the water. What is it about the water? They said the jellyfish went in the water, came out. So what is it about the water? The name implies to this day the objects seen in these videos remain completely unidentified and a total mystery. Next up, we have the leaked top secret United States intelligence documents that were obtained and summarized by the Washington Post on April 27th, 2023. The documents revealed United States concerns about rival space threats in regards to modern warfare. With space technology becoming as advanced as it has in the past few years, the United States is concerned with how other countries, including China, might integrate those advances into their military and defense systems. In one of the leaked documents, this worry was highlighted when it was said that China had developed the capacity to put United States and allied space assets at risk. A corresponding document had also stated that if the China-Taiwan conflict were to escalate, the United States fears that China would exercise their capacity and begin targeting the atmospheric assets as a way to deter Taiwanese allies from coming to their aid. Up next, at our halfway point today, we have the Apollo 1 fire, which occurred 
on January 27th in 1967 and is forever earmarked as the first of many incredibly dark days in NASA's controversial history. The fire took place during a pre-flight test for the spacecraft, during which a flash fire broke out inside the command module, likely sparked by an electrical short that took place under one of three astronaut on board's footrests. The capsule in which Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chafe were seated in excited anticipation was filled with pure oxygen, making the environment highly combustible. When the module sparked, the area was engulfed in flames, and due to the nature of the exits, the three men were unfortunately unable to escape and passed inside the ship, leading to the extreme government scrutiny of the space agency along with public outrage and demands for significant design and engineering modifications in regards to safety. Next on our list. See, this is one of the things I'll be talking about. This incident, I feel like you disrespect these guys who put their lives on the line, have lost their lives when you say we never went to the moon or we never did this or NASA isn't real, space isn't real, this, that, or third. Whatever it is you feel, and you no, don't get me wrong, you got a right to feel that way. I'm not knocking that. But for me, I feel some type of way sometimes because these people put their lives on the line and some have lost their lives trying to get back to or do this job or gather and maintain or, or gather information or go to space, get to space, whatever it is. I, I feel like sometimes they be getting disrespected and I don't like that. We have the incredibly imbecilic incident in which a simple mistake caused $193.1 million and countless hours of work spent on an orbital satellite to go quickly, swiftly, and embarrassingly down the drain. The incident mm. occurred in 1993 when NASA, in partnership with Lockheed Martin Astronautics, designed and built the Mars Climate Orbiter, a 338-kilogram robotic spacecraft designed to investigate climate on Mars by collecting data from the planet's surface and atmosphere. Atmosphere. Now here's where things get dumb. The mission was a complete failure due to nothing other than the fact that the engineers working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory used the metric system of meters and millimeters, while at the Lockheed Institute they used feet, inches, and pounds. Because of this, the orbiter's measurements were way off, Ooh. and upon arrival at Mars, which I'm surprised it even made it made to, it the spacecraft became too close to the planet's atmosphere, which caused it to burn up and completely disintegrate. I mean, I know it's rocket science, but Come on, guys. Next up, we have another great example of how NASA essentially just bleeds money because of the most basic mistakes. In this case, an extra $50 million had to be spent fixing an error made on a mirror attached to the Hubble Space Telescope after they had already spent almost $1.5 billion to build it and after they'd already sent it into space. The issue was brought to light when the incredibly advanced telescope designed to capture high quality images of distant stars and galaxies was sending back blurry ones that looked more like they had been taken with an old Nokia than a $1.5 billion piece of space equipment. It was quickly determined that the reason for these lackluster images was a manufacturing error, which had produced one of the telescope's light reflecting mirrors incorrectly. A simple miscalculation had led to the curve of the mirror being completely incompatible with the rest of the telescope. In order to fix this very expensive mistake, a correction team was sent to the telescope where they installed a series of small mirrors designed to correct the flaws in the original. Luckily, the mission was a complete success, and since then, the Space Telescope has become one of the most precise and productive observatories in our planet's history. Next on the- Ooh, I know somebody lost their job over that. Come on. We all have jobs. We know if we, we mess up, what happened to us? Get called in that office, you sit down, they slide that little paperwork, and they tell you you have to write or, or not to sign it if you don't want to. We get all huffing, puffing our chest, and we think, you know what? I ain't signing that. And we still get written up. But anyway, somebody, something happened like that at NASA. <laughs> something happened like that. Somebody got written up and probably fired for that expensive mistake. On the list, we have a devastating tragedy that resulted in the deaths of seven individuals and a 29-month suspension of the NASA Space Shuttle Program and a serious reevaluation of procedures. The event took place on February 1st of 2003 after Space Shuttle Columbia had been sent to the Hubble so that its team could perform yet another servicing of the telescope, in this case replacing an aging power control unit, removing and installing solar arrays, and conducting instrumental upgrades. The mission seems like a success until Columbia 
began its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, during which the space shuttle disintegrated, ending the lives of all seven astronauts aboard the ship. Another tragic day in NASA's history that holds many similarities to a previous disaster that took place just 17 years prior in which the seven astronauts of the Challenger met a similar fate shortly after takeoff. The shuttle disintegrated in an explosion, most likely caused by a failed O-ring seal on one of the solid rocket boosters. While the news of these kind of accidents are definitely not something NASA as a company wants to be making headlines, it's incredibly important that the public have access to this information so that we're able to push for more extensive testing of spacecrafts and much better safety precautions on future expeditions. Okay, you guys, for these last two points, we're going to air out the room a little bit and do a complete 180 because I want to leave you on a high note. So starting off our top two today, we have the fact that astronauts actually drink their own pee. No, I'm not making this up. I suppose when you're sitting some 250 yeah. miles away from the nearest oceans or streams, liquids tend to be in short supply. So naturally, I ain't gonna lie, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> it's gonna be a no for me, man. That, that probably might be the deciding factor why I never became an astronaut, even though I didn't know at the time. But now that I do, that would have probably been a no for me. Uh -huh. NASA figured out a way to recycle urine into fresh drinking Deal water breaker. for the cosmonauts and astronauts aboard the ISS, the International Space Station. If you're drinking lemonade right now, you might want to put it down as I explain this next part. The ISS resident's urine is distilled through a process called the urine processor assembly, in which vacuum distillation is used to gather the water from the waste, leaving behind something called urine uh. brine. I actually cannot believe my job has me talking about fractionated pee right now, but hey, all in the name of entertainment, right? I cheers to that, but not right now. And finally, for our last point, I don't care what you say, you filtrate it, you do whatever, you extract the water from it, it still started off as pee, man. Like, its origin is what I can't get beyond. Today, we have something that might just be more out there than our last point, if that's even possible. I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. How do I phrase this? Um, have you ever wanted to do it on the moon? Well, if you have, you'll probably think this next guy is a complete legend because while he didn't actually do it on the astronomical body of the moon, Thad Roberts certainly had an astronomical experience with a body yes. on 600 pounds of moon rocks that he had stolen from the NASA Space Agency. 600 no. pounds of moon rocks valued at 20 one million dollars by the way that's like committing grand larceny 4200 times and then doing it on the loot the worst part of all this is that the moon rocks were supposed to be studied by scientists but it seems his specimen ruined their specimen oh. roberts was charged and convicted for his crime sentenced to 100 months eight years in federal prison upon release roberts promised to keep his hands and other things off of the space agency's important artifacts but he also made a point to say that he in no way regretted his actions oh. all right you guys Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely not. He's a le legendary. That was legendary. Although I thought they were going to say something else, of, uh, you know, where he did it at. And I was about to be excited for him because, you know, I ain't going to lie. That would be definitely bucket list material, you know, for me, if I'm going to space to have that happen in, in space. Come on, man. Like, we, we adults, some of us, you know, if you're not in the video right here. But, like I'm saying, that would be, that. I thought that was about to be dope. What he did there was kind of crazy. I, I can't even lie to you, bro. That took a turn for the worse. Now they probably, like she said, they can't even use that stuff because he got, you know what I mean? Mail <clears throat> just all over it, you know? <laughs> but uh, listen, man, this was the top 10 restricted NASA secrets accidentally leaked to the public, man. Y'all can at me in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. Especially, especially that last one. Next one I'm going, man.